1st, 2020. And you should be grabbing your June 1st, so 5th packet. <clears throat> and just like normal, we have our schedule. Making sure if you're in Miss Rudolph's class, your teacher username for Raz Kids is that. Okay, and then we are looking at Monday. We're practicing writing the date. June is a proper noun. It's a new month, so we capitalize the J. Follow the date with a comma, and then put the year. And if you want to practice writing numerically, June is the sixth month. It's the first day in 20. Okay, so we're going to start with our phonics. And you can read along with me. At the top it says, when an R-controlled vowel appears in a word, the vowel and the letter R stay in the same syllable. This syllable is an R-controlled syllable. So the letter R is kind of special. All right, A says to put the two syllables together to make a word and write it on the line. So I have ter, and then we practiced with that L-E syllable a few weeks ago. So ter, tool. Maybe you can draw a picture too. I'll try. Sort of, okay. All right, so you're gonna do the same with two through four. B says use a word. Use a word that you made to answer each riddle and write the word on the line. I lie on the floor, what am I? And you'll once you do this, you'll know, and it's carpet. Do you recognize the two words in there? Car, pet, good. Okay, turning the page, we're gonna go on and we're working with adverbs. Adverbs are really similar to adjectives, so let's read the top together. Adverbs tell more about an action. Okay, so an adjective tells more about a noun, whereas an adverb tells about a verb, and you actually see the word verb in adverb, okay? They give details about how, when, or where. It says, we sing loudly. So your verb is sing, and your adverb, because you're adding it to the verb, is loudly. We sang this song before. So when did you sing the song? We sang it before. Um, we stand here. So stand is a verb. Here describes the verb. Our teacher stands nearby where stands, okay? So you've got to recognize the verb, which is the action, and then the adverb, which is highlighted, okay? Um, now, your directions at the top say so read each sentence, circle the verb, and underline the adverb. So number one says, we visited the zoo yesterday. So what did we do? Because the verb is what you do, right? So what we did is we visited, and what word describes visited? The word that describes visited is yesterday. Zoo would actually be a noun. So let's say we wanted to add an adjective here. We could say we visited the exciting zoo yesterday. Then exciting would be the adjective, okay? All right, so you're going to do the same with two, three, four, and five. Your directions at the bottom say underline the adverb in each sentence and then circle whether the adverb tells how, when, or where. And some of you guys were really excellent at this last week. Number six says, I always eat lunch. So what do we do? We always eat. So um, eat is the verb. And always describes eating. And it describes when we're eating. doesn't describe how or where. It describes when. Okay? Um, all right. So you do the same with seven to eight. Okay? So you have, we're starting a new unit with math, so please make sure this page your parents read. We've got it in both English and Spanish. And we are going to be looking at place value. All right, so at the top it says review and you review the use of boxes, sticks, and circles to represent numbers. Write the number that's shown by the drawing. So the boxes are hundreds, remember we've studied that this year. Our sticks are tens and our circles are ones, okay? 
Um, so it says write the numbers that's shown in the drawing. So you could go, this is 100, that's 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, and now these are tens. So remember we grouped the tens and fives. So this is a five, this is a group of five, so that would be 50. And that's only two left, so that's 20. So I know that, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, I have six hundreds. I wouldn't write 600 because they're writing the word hundreds under here. So how many hundreds do you have? You have six. How many tens do you have? You have seven. And how many ones do you have? You have zero. But if you fill that up here, this should sort of help you, right? So, and when you put all these numbers, it helps you. So you have 670. Okay. You do the same with two and three. Number four asks you to sort of reverse the process, whereas now they're going to give you the number and you're going to draw the um, the boxes, sticks, and circles to represent the number. So 700, and what I love is that they give you lots of space. So, um, and I'm going to add another um, task to this. Maybe practice writing out the word. Even if you don't know the spelling, go ahead and just try. Sound it out, okay? So there's 700, so seven boxes and put them in groups of five. One, two, three, four, five. Now to get to seven, I'm gonna do it again. One, two, and then four, I'm gonna do four sticks. 40, one, two, three, four, or 10, 20, 30, 40. And there's no ones, so I don't have to write any ones. Now another step you could take, just to make sure you have this correct, is right. Prove your work. Proving your work is very important. So 10, 20, 30, 40. And would that match the number I have here? Yes, it would. Now let's even practice writing the word. So this is 740. 740. All right. Notice I don't say and. I just say 740. All right. So you'll go ahead and do six or five, six, and seven. Okay. Turning the page, you are working with addition. Um, this is expanded form is when you are given the number and you separate it into your place values. All right, so it says write hundreds, tens, and ones. They give you the example here, and I think that as a group that this is going to be a pretty easy task for you. So I'm not going to work out number nine because you are already given a sample with number eight where you have 382. So the three represents hundreds, the eight represents tens, the two represents ones. And you could, again, you could take it even further and go back to representing your numbers using boxes, sticks, and circles just to give yourself an extra challenge. Okay, so meaning I would do three boxes. I would do eight sticks in groups of five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I would do two circles. If you really want to take it even a step further than that, then practice writing out the word in word form. So I would write 382. All right. So here, something that can help you is just following the same thing they do with number eight. Write your first letter of your place value under each number. So H for hundreds under the seven. T for tens under the three, eight for ones, or a, I'm sorry, a, z, a zero or an O rather under the eight for ones, okay? And that may help you. So that's just a hint to complete nine, 10, and 11. All right, um, I think you're gonna be fine with writing the numbers here because we practiced that on the previous page. So go ahead and use number 12 as your sample. And the same thing with 16 through 27, but I will give you an example on um, those problems. So because this can get a little confusing because now they have mixed up your place value. So you sort of, in order to understand this, you could just go ahead and write H, tens, ones, hundreds, tens, ones, because in your when you're doing mental math here, It'll help you organize these numbers a little bit easier to be able to come out with the right outcome or the right sum. Okay, so I know that hundreds goes first, so the nine goes first, then the tens, which would be four, and then the ones, which would be five. All right, pretty easy one, but the ones that could trip you up would be something like number 17, 
where you don't have a number in the tens. You only have a 200, so that's an H, right? And you have a ones, which is seven. So this would actually be 200, leave the zero in the tens place because there is no tens, then put a seven in the ones place. Okay? All right, so you go ahead and do 18 through 27 with that. All right, now we're coming to our writing portion, my favorite. Uh, so let's see, in order to figure out what the prompt is, we would turn to, ooh, Wednesday. Mine's upside down. I wonder if yours got copied upside down. If it did, just turn it around. No big deal. All right, so. Huh. Oh, here we go. Super me. There we go. It says, which superpower would you most like to have? Invisibility, super strength, or ability to fly? Ooh, I know what I want. Um, describe what you would do with your powers. Now, because there can be a little temptation to copy my ideas, I'm going to do a different superpower, and I'm going to be I'm going to be able to um, jump as high as I ever want to. Okay, like Spider Man, jump like Spider Man. That's what I'm going to do as my superpower, and that's just for my example. Okay. But you guys have to choose, do you want to be invisible, do you want super strength, or do you want the ability to fly, okay? And then describe what you would do with your powers. So not really why you would use that power, but what you would do, okay? I love that. All right, so, um, so my topic is super power, okay? If I had the super power that allowed me to jump as high as I wanted, I would do so much, okay, I would jump to the highest waterfall in the world. I would jump to any country I wanted <laughs> to visit like Kenya um, and I would use my jumping powers to help others. Okay? So now in our last box we're going to combine all three ideas. So um, where would I go? I would go to the highest waterfall. I would go to other countries. And I would help others with my power. I would impart on you and I would suggest that this idea could be something that you could use with any of the superpowers you write about and I'm okay with you using this idea too because we should always be trying to help other people if we can, okay? So think about that. All right. Now you're coming to your spelling words, which would normally be your spelling homework, and um, you can check these off as you do them. We'll do the math on the back. We'll read for 20 minutes, hopefully from Raz Kids, or even a book, which is excellent and honestly even better for your eyes um, and your brain by reading from a book, okay? So if you read from a book, great job. Study, this is, I think this is our last time to study our sight words for second grade, so study those lists. 23 through 30. Make flashcards only for the unknown words. Write your spelling words three times each. Let's go through and read these words together. We're going to go across, okay? So jump, jumper, high, higher, star, starry, other, mother, ever, paper. Good job. 
All right, and coming over to your math, just continuing the same um, skill that we were doing with our math earlier. So um, I'm, I'm hesitant to give you an example here because you only have two, but remembering, so I'll just read them out to you. It says count the hundreds and the ones and write the totals. So how many hundreds are there? There's 100. Okay, so you're going to fill in tens, ones, and then combine those numbers to make a number. Here, I'll give you the ones. They're grouped in fives. So if there's a line of five here and there's almost a line of five at the end, but there's one missing, I know that there's nine ones. Okay? So you fill in the rest there. All right, and then the numbers three through six ask you to do the drawings. So um, in two of these, I will give you part of the drawing. How about that? Okay? You have to do the boxes for the hundreds. The tens for this problem would be one, two, three, four. Remember, if you want to push yourself even further, Practice writing the number 243. All right, 243. Um, down here, I will do your ones for number six. So number six would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember, we do in groups of set of five. Okay. All right. So that's all of your work for Monday. Please make sure that you are on. Very important, you guys. Please make sure that you guys are on Raz Kids, IXL, Freckle, and then Prodigy. Okay? All right. Make sure you're being kind to your brothers and sisters. Find something to do to help around the house. Make sure you get outside. It helps your brain. We miss you. See you soon. Bye-bye.